Hey there, I'm Radical Dreamer, and welcome to my preview of The Outcast, episode 11. The Outcast is a podcast done by myself and two other Japanese-speaking gamers living here, in Japan. In this episode, we talk about the 48th Amusement Machine Show, an arcade convention that always seems to be ignored due to its proximity to TGS. And, as with our TGS special, we are joined again by special guests Kat Bailey and Dan Fite. You may have seen their work on 1UP, Wired, GamePro, or EGM, just to name a few. As a preview, I've included our talk on Gundam Extreme Versus. If you like what you hear, please download the full episode over at theoutcastpodcast.blogspot.com or click the link in the information box below. Peace out. Well, speaking of mecha games, I would love to hear your thoughts on Gundam Extreme Versus. Since right. I didn't get to play it yet. Right, well, Richard, you played more than them. We, we both played it. We both played, but I must have done seven or eight rounds of it. I did okay. two. And you're back to the Legal because that's me. It's me back. Yes. It's back. Yes. Well, hang on, Dan. Did you play? Oh. No, I've never been a big uh, giant robot guy. So for a little context, so Dan, that's the door. <laughs> <laughs> so for a little context, um, the Gundam versus series, like it started out originally just the original Gundam, mm. and it continued on Gundam for a while. DX. There was a Seed series where it was just all Seed. seed yep. Yeah, for two games, and then. It moved to Gundam vs. Gundam, which was which all of them. It brought in King of Fighters, Samurai, <laughs> Shadow Wait, what? And frankly, that would be awesome, seriously. Frankly, Gundam vs. Gundam was a pretty bad game. Because uh, it wasn't very well balanced. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot slower than Ringo vs. Zaf 2. But yeah, I noticed that. You're much right. slower. And, but they, what was next, they fixed all of that, brought in a lot of really great suits, like... Mm-hmm. Um, the Epion and the and the the Kubelay and everything, and they even made it even better on Nix Plus by bringing bringing in even more suits. The other thing about the original Gundam versus Gundam, terrible on the PSP, on a was wretched it? PSP port. Not only was the frame rate pretty bad, but it was as bare bones as you could get. We're talking so bare bones that they put in the arcade unlockable, which was the Double O unit, um, mm-hmm. Exia. Didn't even bother to make a cutscene for it. Didn't give it its own music. Didn't do anything. Like, it was just such a straight port that I kind of feel insulted that I spent money on it. But Next was really good. Next Plus was really good. So now we got Gundam Extreme Versus, which, once again, it's the, um, you know... All the Gundams. It's all, all the Gundams And they're shows. trying really hard now, this time they, to hit but everyone. This, but they added in Crossbone. Which is now, a Mongo. Do you want to explain... Yeah, to a total Gundam neophyte like me, who knows nothing about Gundam Wing, what type of game is Gundam vs? How does it play? It's, it's like a, Virtual On. It's, okay. It's, it's a Virtual On, with two versus two with Gundams. You know, that's a really good way of putting Virtu- it. Yeah. Like Virtual On, it's very well spoken, yeah. yes. Yeah, two versus two, very good. Virtual On, like. That's a that's um, a pretty good way of talking. A little less arcadey. Yes. But more, little bit very faster, fast-paced. Faster, much faster. Very fast-paced. Um, relies heavily on juggles, combos, um, like... Being able to Charge catch attacks. somebody when they, being able to catch somebody when they land and shoot that's, them. That's that's the whole key. Is there's a brief moment when you run out of boost and you have to land on the ground, where no matter what the suit, it has this maybe one second window where there's nothing they can do. And there's a team tactics or a big thing. So if somebody starts ends up in a melee combo, then you shoot the guy who's doing the melee combo so that they don't die. Mm. Yeah. And then another key part of the strategy is that each uh, unit has a cost. So you have your 1,000 unit. How many points do you get? Uh, well, I, I believe you get something like 5,000 points. Okay, and so you've got 1,000 point units. So the idea is you have 1,000 points, 2,000 points, and 3,000 points. So if somebody gets, say, two 3,000 point units, mm-hmm. um, if you if they both die... You have die, one death between the two of you. You get one death between the two of you. Yeah. Um, if you get a 3,000 and a 2,000, I believe you might get two, two deaths, maybe. It depends on which one of the games you're playing. The idea Some will let you have zero life and live. Other ones, if you have less than 1,000. And then 1,000 ones, then you have like three, four, five right. lives. The trade-off, of course, is that a 1,000 unit, it's like, like the doms of the world. So the, in other words, it's, yeah. it's cannon fodder. The cannon fodder. And then the two thousands are the medium, the medium units like um, the Yakushiki, yeah. the Zeta, the ri- the original Gundam. And then top tier would be Kublai, the Double X, the uh, Strike Freedom. You know the those kinds of units. The OMG, look at that. Gundam. So <laughs> they added a bunch of shows units. for Extreme Versus. 
they revamped the graphical style, so now it's in high def. And has this very nice cell-shaded look, too. Yeah, I've got to say something about that, because it's something that's also been done on Gundam Musou 3, which yes. was announced recently, that, which almost looks like it's using some of the same models, and the very, very similar cell shading look. It's not 100% cell shaded, nor 100% straight up texture. But it's a good look. Yeah, it's mm. in between, and it gives it enough solidarity, but it looks and feels solid, but still looks slightly animated. I really The like main it. Japanese blogs are not taking off the Gundam Muso 3 and the art style. They are I've heard pushing that. away in droves. Well, they are not happy Muso with 3 it. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going not back Muso 3. to the original, that was made by Capcom. And after that... Oh, yeah, that's on the Dreamcast. They handed it over to uh -huh. Bandai... Na Bandai Namco handed it to another team, and they essentially used the same engine going all the way to Next Plus. And, and while that's true, and it it's always... It's always been... How do I put it? Upgraded, though. It's yeah. become better and better Slightly each time. Slightly better. It, it's been a very gradual thing, but if you compare... But Extreme say, Versus is a, a big jump. Right, right. Yeah. Suddenly, here's, it's really Here's nice. the big thing. It's on the PS3 hardware. So this time, it is almost certain to be ported to a home console. And now, listeners, this is, this if it doesn't get ported, than a you can put all complaints into Kat's email box. Let Please me contact you, her. I can't wait, because it'll come out on the PS3. I can play with Gwyn and Richard online. It'll be grand. I will, will be playing be all the time. Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah, right. In a heartbeat. Oh, that is day one. I will be stuff. buying a, oh, no, a I'm joystick be, I'm for I'm going to be busy it, playing you know? Pac-Man Battle Royale. <laughs> I was really furious when Next was announced for the PSP. Yeah, so but right. they at least they at least redeemed it with a really really good. good well, they added a single player mode. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Now, uh, Extreme Versus also adds a bunch of new series. There's Crossbone Gundam, which was a manga. It's about pirate Gundams. Pirate Gundams. The only yeah. thing that can make this better is, is if there were zombies involved. It's essentially a sequel mm. to Gundam F91, which was yeah. never finished really. Uh, it was supposed to be a show, and then it ended up being a movie. It? Yeah, yeah. It brings the pirates in. Yeah. The Crossbow Vanguard. Yeah. Some of the sweetest designs in all of the Gundam. Oh, yeah. It's becoming really popular. Also, Ace R on the PS3 has yes. crossbones as it's well. Been, it, it's not really gotten a proper treatment in Super Robot Tyson, but it's appeared... Um, but it has appeared. It's coming. But now <laughs> it's kind of making a comeback along with X. Well, who How knows? Is X Hopefully we get it animated at some point. Still. Other shows that are making their debut, um, MS Igloo, yep. which is really surprising, honestly. Because the Igloo mecha do not really lend themselves to this kind of fast gameplay. They're mostly very early UC Gen 1, and they're Igloo, also prototypes. Igloo takes place before the original Gundam. Yeah. So, <laughs> Or during the one you wore. So we're yeah. talking like the earliest of the early. Yeah, the prototypes. Yeah. Right. And, and then, then there's also... 8th MS Team? Oh, that was always. Was that in it. the last one? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Okay, I wasn't sure about. That. No, it's um, Astray, isn't it? Yeah. Astray is a spinoff yes. of Gundam Seed, oh, and it has it. Richard is fist pumping. Oh, it has I the red it. frame and the blue blue frame. Blue frame wasn't in the game <laughs> when we said played blue frame. it. I did. <laughs> it has a red frame and a blue frame. <laughs> and gold frame. Now and a gold frame, but in, in the game, I think it's just red frame. Yeah, just red frame, and I was like, oh come on though, blue now, frame is the one that most people like the design of. Anyway. I like the blue frame. No, um, Seed kind of, kind of, like, you could debate this, but the original Seed was semi, somewhat <laughs> realistic. Somewhat. Yeah. But Astray really almost takes it into G Gundam territory. Like, the red frame has a big katana, and, oh. like, it's really over the top in the way it does everything. But on the other hand, the designs are so cool. <laughs> So having the red frame in uh, Gundam Extreme Versus, I'm sure yeah. blue frame will be in the inevitable update. Yeah.